the first thing that happens, this is our input to our system. So really what that means, this is the, the cause. And we had a special word to describe that. And in our chosen situation with the snake and the cowboy, our particular cause being the snake is visual stimuli. And so this cowboy sees the snake on the ground and he's like, oh my god, I gotta run away. So I'm just gonna add a little kind of icon here just to represent that snake. Again, I'm not an artist, but... There we go. This is our snake. So this is the cause of all the stuff going on in our nervous system. So if this is the input to our system, how does this information or this stimuli, this visual type of stimuli, get into our system? How does it get input? Well, it has to get in through what we would call a sensory receptor. And the sensory receptors in this particular case, because we're talking about visual stimuli, are going to be our eyes. So eyes are, remember, an organ. And inside your eyes, you actually have specialized cells or sensory neurons. Um, that are going to take in this visual stimuli. So I'm just going to draw kind of an eyeball here. This is going to be the optic nerve. And so if we were to actually kind of zoom in here to the back of your eye and look at what's inside there, um, at the back of your eye, you've got all of these tiny little cells called rods and cones. And those are various types of sensory receptors, so photoreceptors for lights, um, shadows, darkness, color, all sorts of things like that. And so these are our sensory neurons. So remember, those are cells. We talk about those levels of organization. So if we've taken in information now, it's input into our system. I'm going to call this step two. It has to get sent somewhere. So that information then gets sent um, to, the, to the brain for processing. So I'm going to add just a little note, maybe even a little icon to represent like a message being sent. So message travels to the brain and it does this by going down this structure here which is called the optic nerve all right so if I continue on here now this message this information has reached the brain. So what happens in the brain? What's going on in that kind of intermediate step? So this is our integration. And maybe we could talk about where that's happening in the brain. Does, so from our eyes, the information actually gets sent via the optic nerve, it starts in the back of the brain, so this structure here, and then it's going to go up to our motor cortex and um, coordinate a response to send that information out, back down to our body. And so the occipital lobe that's the part at the back here, um, they process the image. And then the motor cortex plans a response. And then it's going to send that message out. Okay, 
So now we know what we're going to do because of this snake. Our brain has got a plan and it's going to send that information back out so that we can react to it. So I'm looking at sending this information where it needs to go. So if I want to run away, I've got to send this information to my leg muscles so that they contract, pull on my bones, and I start to run away. But I'm going to zoom in and take a closer look at that journey or how it gets from my brain all the way down to my leg muscles. So I might even zoom in and show, for example, one neuron just to give kind of a close up. I could do this anywhere along the map. I'm just going to start here. So here's a very simple kind of icon to represent the average neuron. And so I could put this anywhere in my neural map. I'm just choosing to add it here. And this is where I might want to talk about the different parts of the neuron. So this part here, this is the cell body. These little fingers are dendrites. Oh, sorry. And then this whole kind of long piece in the middle, this is the axon. These are the in-between bits, are the nodes of Rambier. We have the myelin sheath. And so that message is going to travel through the nerve all the way to the end to these gaps between neurons. And so if I kind of zoom in on that, I've got these spaces between neurons where messages are sent across, and this is called a synapse. And this is just going to go from neuron to neuron to neuron all the way to the end result here. I'm going to keep kind of moving in this direction. So if I'm still kind of in the brain, I've got my brain here, neuron to neuron through the brain, I've got my spinal cord, and here's kind of my limbs. So the brain, I might actually just change my colors here so that we can tell the different systems or subsystems. So my brain and my spinal cord, this is all part of our central nervous system, or the CNS. So brain and spinal cord. That message is going to travel down the spinal cord towards my legs. I might actually just keep moving in this direction. So I might just indicate that that message is continuing to travel on. The message is passed from neuron to neuron. And then on to the PNS. So we've left the central nervous system. I'm just going to call this whole step here number four. So I'm kind of zooming in. And now we're reaching kind of the end of our journey. We're reaching our goal destination. But if we're delivering a message that's about movement, we're delivering that message to motor neurons. And so those motor neurons, I'm just going to draw a little icon here to represent a motor neuron. They're going to receive this message from the CNS and deliver it to the effector cells.
in this case, our effector cells, that's going to be our muscles. Because those are the things responsible for moving our bones. So I'm gonna call this step number six. I'm gonna draw a little leg here. Again, I'm not an artist on my computer. Here's some muscle tissue. Okay. And maybe if I kind of zoom in and look at this here, I would have my muscle tissue. And I would have a neuron that's going to deliver that message. So this is going to be a motor neuron that's going to deliver that message to the muscle cells and it's going to tell them to contract. And so now I am in the peripheral nervous system. So this is in the PNS. And they're going to tell those muscles to contract. So I'm going to end up with a movement. And this is the result or the effect. So this is a motor output. This is what we get all because of this snake. So the message is delivered. I might just sort of open up the mail and say, dear muscle. Run. So the message is delivered. Um, and the effect is to run away. And just to kind of expand on that, we're telling the muscles to contract. So the message tells the muscles to contract. And contract really just means to squeeze or to shrink, to contract and pull my bones. to create movement. And then in the end, what I get is somebody running away. So here's my cowboy. Again, I'm not an artist. I'm going to try drawing somebody running. running away from the snake. This all happens, so this entire process is going to happen in fractions of a second. So this whole series of steps. And so if I kind of go back through this, this is a neural map. It's showing the steps or the processes that we would take, um, the structures involved along the way. And we can continue to keep adding depth and detail as we go. So even if I go kind of back to this first stage here, I could expand on this. Um, so sensory receptors, your eyes are an organ. Inside you have those sensory neurons called cells. If you remember the specific name for those, so remember there are rods and cones. And this is extension. And these are um, special um, light receptive cells and so those are called photoreceptors and maybe I even could zoom in on those and give more detail or I could give more of a picture of the eye so I'm just kind of showing some possible extensions so the, the message travels to the brain maybe I want to zoom in and take a deeper look at the brain I could maybe expand and zoom inside to the brain to show the different lobes, the different structures, but maybe also how images are processed. So if these are your eyes, your images actually are crossed in your brain and they go to the opposite side of your brain in the back there in the occipital lobe. And then your brain puts those images back together 
um, and actually flips them right side up and interprets what you're seeing. So this is just possible ways that I could expand on my neural map. But what I'm going to do is actually, in terms of a scientific model, to make those steps nice and clear, I'm going to maybe put all of those three main steps. So input, integration, and motor output. I'm going to make sure that those are nice and clear. So those are our main steps of our nervous system. So at the very end, we have our motor output. Mine's kind of all squiggly. I'm drawing on an iPad, so I'm not that great at it. But yeah, that's our story of how information is processed within the nervous system. So I, I've zoomed out quite a bit. I'll take separate pictures piece by piece and put it back.